For this video, I'll show you how to get a rough idea of your final drive ratio without actually pulling the entire gearbox apart and counting the teeth on every gear. Now it is more accurate to take the gearbox apart, count every tooth on your primary and secondary gears, and do the math to come up with the exact ratio, but this way will work fine if you just need a close approximation. If you're planning to buy a set of gears, I would recommend taking apart your gearbox and actually finding out exactly what your primary and secondary gears are before you purchase. But if you're just considering it or trying to figure out if gearing may be your problem or if you may benefit from a gearing change, then this can be a quick way just to kind of figure out where you're at. If you rotate the rear wheel and tire, you can see that the clutch bell here and the rear wheel and tire rotate at different rates. You can see that the clutch bell is turning more revolutions than the tire is. And the amount of revolutions it takes this clutch bell to turn to make the rear wheel and tire turn one full revolution will be your final drive gear ratio. So what we need to do is to mark the clutch bell and the rear tire and figure out exactly how many turns of the clutch bell it takes to turn the tire one full revolution. Now what I'm going to do is just use masking tape. You can see I've already got some little pointers cut out here. I've got four of them. You can also use a marker or a crayon or chalk or something like that. And what you're going to need to do is mark the clutch bell as well as a reference point for the clutch bell and mark the tire and some sort of reference point for that mark on the tire. I'll start with a clutch bell and obviously if your CVT cover is invented like mine is, doesn't have a big hole, you'll have to take your CVT cover off to start this process. But what I'm going to do is just take a piece of masking tape or make a mark and point it right to the edge of one point of the clutch bell. Now you'll need to take another marker and line that up so that it's pointing at the same spot that the marker on your clutch bell is, but this needs to be on a CVT cover or somewhere external to the clutch bell so that you can line that up each time that the clutch bell passes. Now you could actually, in my case, use this bottom edge here and line the clutch bell up with that each time, but I'll just go ahead and put a marker on here. So now the markers on there didn't quite line up exactly where I stuck it, so I'm just going to rotate the clutch bell until they point at each other. So now I've got a mark on my clutch bell and a reference point as well for the clutch bell mark and I need to do the same thing basically for the rear tire. Uh, you can put it on a wheel tire, whatever you want, as long as you can get a good reference mark. And what I find is easiest is to place it straight down at the very bottom of the tire basically. So go ahead and put a mark right there. Then you'll want to go back and make sure that these two marks for your clutch bell and its reference mark are still aligned because you may have moved the tire putting the mark on. And if they aren't aligned, go ahead and align those real quick. Then you'll need to make a reference mark for the mark that you just put on the tire. So what I do is I just place a marker directly on the ground and make sure that you get that lined up from your perspective so that it looks like it's directly aligned with the mark on the tire. So now if it's done right, you should have a mark on your clutch bell that aligns with a reference mark pointing towards it. You should also have a mark on your tire that aligns with a reference point for it. And all of those should align with each other at the same time. If you find that either one of these are not aligning at the same time, go back and adjust, move your markers around or whatever, so that they're all four aligned at the same time. Now that we have these four marks and they're all aligned, the rest of the process for finding out your final drive ratio is very simple. All we need to do is rotate the rear tire one full revolution. So we're going to rotate the rear tire until this mark goes all the way around and matches up with this mark once again. You'll need to rotate the rear tire slowly because while the rear tire is rotating, you need to count how many times this mark on the clutch bell passes its reference point. I'll go through the process on this scooter so you can see exactly how it works. So I'm going to rotate the tire slowly and watch this mark on the clutch bell for each time that it passes its reference mark. So I start rotating the tire 
And now you can see the clutch bell has came around one time and lined up with that mark. And you can also see the tire hasn't really moved that far. So I'm going to keep going. There's two revolutions. There's three revolutions. There's four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. You can see now this mark on my tire is starting to get near the initial mark, the reference mark there. There's ten. Getting real close. There's eleven. And the mark is almost aligned with the bottom. So if I go ahead and rotate the tire enough that it aligns exactly. So with these two marks exactly aligned, the clutch bell rotated a full 11 times and went just this far past the reference mark. So that's just over 11 to 1 final drive ratio, meaning the clutch bell rotated 11 times for one revolution of the rear tire. In this case, I have had the gearbox apart before, so I have counted all the teeth and I do know that it has an 11.05 to 1 final drive ratio and as you saw we passed that 11 times and got just beyond the reference marks lining up there so slightly over 11 is what I would have concluded from this test 11.05 to 1 is what I know from the other test of course if you put a mark here exactly opposite would be a half a rotation here would be a quarter rotation and here will be three quarters and then you could divide it up into eights or as far as you really want to try to work it out but you can get a good rough idea of what your gearbox ratio is without ever taking it apart this way.